hey guys <laughs> happy vlogmas day two i see the way we're going i just kind of wanted to get ready with you guys i was just listening to a sermon and i'm getting ready for a cooking show with one of my really good friends ashley and so i'm just gonna throw on a little bit of makeup show you guys my routine all of that kind of stuff but I'm listening to Authentic Church with Bobby Chandler, and he's in a series called Counterfeit. This is a this was a couple months ago, and I'm like re-listening back to them. I just really, really love it. So I just wanted to get ready, but there was a part in this that I wanted to play because so much modern culture like loves to worship false idols. Um, I posted something about this the other day on my Instagram, and I literally got attacks. People say that you're gonna get from posting stuff like that. It was like. You're so judgmental. Christians think they're the main character. Not you making fun of other people's beliefs. And I know there was one more that was... Oh, there's so many gods to worship. Like, why are you uh, trying to force us into one or something like that? It was something similar to that. And it's like, ba baby girl, there is just one God. That's how the Christian religion is. There's one God. There's so, many, so much worship of false idols. And in the reel that I made, I was talking about crystals like I was like people think I'm crazy for believing in God but they put their crystals outside to charge and they believe in that and they idolize that but I'm crazy because I believe in God and there's just a lot of pushback on that and I just kind of wanted to share some stuff that was actually from the word of God so I'm going to play this little part of this sermon for you guys because I was listening to it and I was just like wow like this is something more people need to hear so I'm gonna play this as I make my fizz so you guys can hear it Second Kings chapter 21 verses 3 through 6 says that Manasseh, he constructed altars for Baal. And he set up an Asherah pole just as King Ahab of Israel had done. Same demonic influence. Loving the lies, the same demons at work right here. And also listen to this. He also bowed before all the powers of the heavens and worshiped them. This is talking about the worship of astrology. Because as the Babylonian Empire was getting bigger and bigger, they started to bring out things like the horoscope. The horoscope was created by the Babylonians, by Babylon. And they created this. Why? Because they believed that the demons can control your life. And they would give you the things that you want on the days that you were born, according to how things align in the sky. So they started to worship the creation instead of the creator. This was all to fool people so demons can run your life. And we still see this today. And a lot of people think it's a joke and they still go about this way and they still think, okay, this is going to tell me how my week is going to go. Listen, don't allow demons to tell you how your week is going to go. Come on. Give it all over to God. Come on. Only God knows your future. Okay, because horoscopes were invented and becoming popular by the Babylonians at this time. He also did this. He built pagan altars in the temple of the Lord. Underline that, please. Because we've seen that, but we just look past it. He built these idols. These altars in the temple, in the temple of the Lord, the place where the Lord has said, my name will remain in Jerusalem forever. He built these altars for all the powers of the heavens and both courtyards of the gods of the Lord's temple. Manasseh also sacrificed his own son in the fire. He practiced sorcery, divination. He consulted with mediums and psychics. And he did much that was evil in the Lord's sight. He wanted all this power, all this authority. He wanted supernatural answers in his life, but he never run to God for those answers. He went to everything else that the world said, this will give you the answer. It was all counterfeit. It was all fake. And every bit of it, every lie, opens up a door for a demon to attack your life. Amen. To put thoughts inside of your head to make you think a certain way. So what demons did he bring into the culture? First demon I want to talk about is Baal. We talked a little bit about Baal last week. He was the false god of prosperity and power. They also believe that Baal brought rain, which is why Elijah said, listen, I'm going to speak from the Lord. There'll be a drought for three years. The idol that you serve, that you believe will make you prosper and bring rain. There will be no rain until my God says so, until Yahweh speaks it. Come right? on. And a lot of us know the story of 450 prophets of Baal that went against Elijah. But what did they do? Remember, Elijah is standing up to them, and he goes fire from heaven, and only Yahweh was able to do this. All right, not the fake prophets of Baal and this counterfeit God of theirs. But here's what they did. 
First Kings chapter 18, verse 28, they cried out with a loud voice to get Baal's attention. They cut themselves with swords and laces in accordance with their custom until blood flowed out of them. They had to harm themselves. This is demonic. Come on. They Come believed on. in this state of meditation. They could have an altered state of consciousness. If they hurt themselves, they would hear from their God. This is all paganism, every bit of it. It was a demonic door to harm them. Their God could not hear them. Baal did nothing for them. Only Yahweh was able to do the supernatural. Come All on. they did was hurt themselves and then they were killed. They were destroyed because of the fake counterfeit God that they served. And so there's a major difference between the meditation of the world and the meditation as a Christian. As a Christian, we meditate on God's word. Yep. As a Christian, when we get into the word of God, we praise Jesus and we look at his word and we allow his word to fill our minds and our hearts. But the word will tell you meditation means just open up your mind to let whatever in. Just be empty to let whatever in. Just release it all and allow anything into your life. Don't you know that is an open door for a demon to attack? Yep. Especially when you hurt yourself to get into an altered state of consciousness. This is all demonic. The second demon, though, is Asherah, the female deity of fertility. From the Canaanites. Listen. This demon promoted prostitution. Okay. So I kind of want to uh, talk on that a little bit. So you guys know, like those of you that have been here for a while versus those of you that don't know, I got this tattoo. I got a 111. I also have this one. I want to get them all removed, but I have the 111 on my finger. So I want to bring that up and have that like in a video that where I'm talking about it because I believed in angel numbers. Like, I am a Christian. The only tattoos I've gotten since I, like, started to become Christian was I got an olive branch around my arm and I got a cross right here, which I kind of, I don't know, I kind of regret getting tattoos now, not just because of Christianity, but, like, I just, for me personally, I don't know. I just kind of did it on impulse. Anyways, I have the 111. I believed in angel numbers. I have so many pictures, probably, that I could find on my phone of me taking pictures of 111, 333, all these things like this. I believed it meant you are on the right path. That's what I told everybody it meant. I have a tattoo, um, like an underboob tattoo. I'm just going to show you guys. Like, what? Why would I do that? <laughs> but I have an underboob tattoo that says angel energy. And I don't think that one's as bad, as long as it's not fallen angel energy. Um... But the 111 is the bad one. And I recently decided that what it's going to mean for me is Psalms 111, which is a thanksgiving to the Lord passage. But I want to talk about, like, this false God thing. I was so scared when I posted it because I started getting so much backlash. And I started to think, like, maybe I'm wrong. And I knew the enemy was just getting into my head. But it was really hard on me. So I actually archived the video for a bit because... I let Satan get to me. Like, I'm not perfect. That's why I'm making this video now, because ever since I posted that and then I archived the video, like, I have gotten so many, like, signs from God, and I've heard it in so many podcasts about how bad it is and how much it needs to be talked about in our culture. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm not judgmental. I'm looking out for you. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to have good things. I don't want you to be led by demon-filled things. Like, that is just the way that this is. It's like when people are like, there's so many gods. Like, there's one God. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, it's all of that. And people want to get in your head and be like, oh, well, you're not being inclusive of everyone else. And it's just like, that's because there's one way to go to heaven. And it's by giving your life to Jesus and letting him lead. So I want to talk about that, although it, it will cause strife with people. But there could be one person's life that I changed because I posted a video about it. Like I said, I didn't know about the false idols until recently. Like, I, I just wasn't aware really about it. I hadn't heard much about it yet. Nobody had said anything to me about it. Like, I was still... I have a period tracker on my phone that I used, I've used. i used for years. Now I need to like get a new one. It's called Star something. But it talks about witches and it talks about the stars. And there's just so many things in it that it's like worshiping something that's not God. I could just have a period tracker that says you started this day, you started this day. Or what's that one app? CoStar. I had CoStar for a really long time. I had Daily Horoscope on my home phone for a really long time. And it's like, those are all things that are worshiping astrology. 
they're worshiping a false idol. You can't worship God and also worship something else. Um, I had another account reach out to me the other day and say, you lost a follower because you're not inclusive of people. Like you, we should be able to worship Christ or we should be able to be super into crystals and still believe in God. Like that doesn't stop it, but you're worshiping two separate things. You're worshiping a false idol and you're trying to worship God and you can't do that at the same time. It's just like somebody who says they believe in God, they worship God, they follow his ways, but they're cheating on their significant other or they are in a spirit of lust. Like modern culture, that's where kind of where he goes on in, in this sermon when he started talking about um, the prostitution and the lust. Like they created a sanctuary place to be a brothel. So they were having people cheating on their significant others. They were all having sexual relationships and just all of these things. And then when they would have babies that were made through this they would burn the babies alive and they would kill them and that's kind of the things that you're seeing go on is the burning and killing and beheading of babies in israel it's it's just crazy how many people are set on a different path like that's what the enemy wants he got into our music he got into our movies he got into everything possible that he could to influence us and to make us just care about ourselves, to live our truth, um, to be you. Like, no, I don't want to be me. I don't want to wake up and just be me. I want to be the me that God has created me to be after I read through my Bible and I'm just in a more peaceful state. I was listening to Stephen Furtick on Elevation Worship. Now I know what I was talking about. And he was like, there's two you. He's like, it doesn't matter if it's me. Uh, like, I'm a literal pastor. It doesn't matter if it's the person that has studied the Bible the longest in their life or if it's a new Christian or just any person. Everybody has the you that you can be and the you that God created you to be. The you after you've had your morning cup of joe with your Bible reading. That's the person you want to show up as. You don't want to show up as the person that's short-tempered or mean or um, just anything like that. Like there's two different sides to everybody and just showing up as that positive light for people is so important. So you don't want to be you. Like if I was me, I wouldn't be getting any help from God. Like I would just show up as whatever I decided to be that day rather than showing up in love and showing up and caring for people and all that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of crazy. Like I've fallen into it. Other people will fall into it. I may get back backlash from this video because the enemy knows that like when we're trying to expand the kingdom of God and we're trying to help people understand his schemes, he just wants to fight back and he wants people to try and make us feel wrong and make us feel small. I didn't know that that's what this video is going to be, <laughs> but I think that maybe this is just what my calling is. Like I think God puts these things on my heart and makes me want to do them and I think it's just because this is what he wants me to do. He wants me to help people and recently my social media my my instagram in particular i've had instagram since probably like 2012 like i've had it forever and i run a business from my phone and i've been trying to grow my business through my phone on my instagram for a couple months and i didn't catch a following from it like i've always had i've stuck around like three to four thousand followers somewhere in there on my instagram um and in the past month because I got a tug on my heart one day to post a video about God. I just, I felt like it was him telling me that I should do that, like I should share my faith. And I've always had this tug that I was, I wanted to help influence people for something good. I wanted to serve others. I wanted to be an, I basically wanted to be an influencer like my whole life. And I never wanted to work like a nine to five um, job and be tied down. And I thought that my answer was my Arbonne business. And then I got that tug on my heart and it was just like you should post about your faith so I did and you should post about your sobriety journey because that's not normal in today's culture like not a lot of people are like that and I'm so glad that it's starting to become more normalized because it's so important to not be pulled into sin and temptation because that's when the enemy can take a foothold like in your life and I like it just oh it's a hard thing so I made a post about it and that video got 2 million views on Instagram. And obviously there's videos that get way more than that. But 2 million people? That's like a lot of people. <laughs> like I can't wrap my mind around that. That pe that many people saw my before and my after of 
my sobriety journey and it's just like I was like wow so then I just felt every time that I found an audio I wanted to use there was a way for me to use it to glorify God and to like expand his kingdom and to help people understand and I was just I just kept doing it and doing it and I started to actually see significant growth in my social media again it's not for that it's not for pleasure of me it's not so I can be rich and I can do this it's because like expanding God's kingdom is so important and the fact that he's anointing this he's doing the work through me I'm just his servant I'm just running through life and trying to be good and using all of his things like I'm reading the Bible I'm singing worship music I serve at my church like I love the Lord so much and trying to spread his word is all I want to do like let him speak through me that's what's happening right now I literally black out when he wants to speak through me and I just say everything that he has for me and then I get done and I'm like what did I talk about like what happened because he's just so good so worshiping false idols equals bad and God is good <laughs> yeah wow I'm sweating in here I think the Holy Spirit's in here a little lip gloss on. Well, that's it for today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If you have questions, you can comment below or you can DM me and talk to me about things or if you're struggling with a sobriety journey thing or anything like that. I love to talk about that and love to help people with that and love to help people find God. So leave prayer requests below, any of them that you have. I'd love to answer them and love to help you out with that. And yeah, I love you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I see the way we're going